On today's episode, we have some of the craziest rocket images I've seen in a while, so let's get straight into it. This is what remains of the Super Heavy Booster number 11, used on the fourth integrated flight test of Starship in June this year. Elon Musk has confirmed that SpaceX recently went through the process of exhuming the booster's remains from a watery grave at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. And while the company definitely made an effort to keep their recovery operations under wraps, the more dedicated SpaceX followers were onto them long before Elon delivered the proof. This all really got started on September 17th, with the space engineer posting on X that a recovery vessel named HOS Ridgewood was known to be operating at the splashdown point of Booster 11. According to the vessel's itinerary, it first departed from Port Isabel, Texas, and traveled to a location 15 kilometers offshore, just short of the Booster 11 location. The ship's manifest says there were divers on board, so a potential training exercise. Following that, the Ridgewood made a layover at the Mexican port of Altamira, before returning north and taking up position in the general area of the Booster 11 wreckage. Photos of the vessel show that it is equipped with a large knuckle boom crane, and we know the depth of the ocean at this point is only about 60 meters, so if the booster were standing up straight, it would be taller than the waterline. This recovery effort was confirmed shortly after that by the guys from Interstellar Gateway, who managed to get their hands on a boat and drove out to see the operation for themselves on September 18th. And what they found was pretty much exactly what was suspected, the HOS Ridgewood with its crane deployed into the water in the midst of removing debris from the bottom of the ocean. Looking again at the vessel's itinerary, it returned back to Altamira from the wreckage site and is set to arrive at the port of Brownsville, Texas on the 25th, which is hopefully the day that you're watching this video, so hopefully more pictures will be coming very soon. For now, since I remain trapped in the past, we can only analyze this one photo provided by Elon, but there's still a lot to be learned here. The Raptor engines that we can see all appear to be in pretty decent shape. The bell nozzles are in various states of mangled and there's some gunk in a few of them, so that's probably more to do with impacting the ocean floor than anything flight related. The actual engines themselves appear to be fine, they didn't blow up or anything. Of course, there is a big chunk missing, which would seem to line up with the energetic failure that we saw on Booster 11's landing. It would make sense that the missing segment of the ring is the same area that was on fire during the landing burn. We're also missing that center engine cluster that was probably too heavy to stay attached to the outer ring, so I'd imagine SpaceX pulled that up on a second lift if it remained intact. It probably did though, given the state of what we're looking at already. Now looking at the clean line around the edge of the ring, was it cut away from the tank section? Did the weld holding this ring to the next one break off? We have to assume that Super Heavy simply fell over on its side after engine cutoff and didn't explode in a giant fireball. It might have, but if it came to a rest on the surface of the water, then that tank section would have a pretty decent amount of buoyancy. It's just a big empty tube at this point, while the engine section would be inclined to just sink like a stone, so those two opposing forces would have likely been enough to tear the engines away from the main body, which might have floated for a little while but would eventually collapse and sink. There's a reason we only ever see these things standing straight up, so if it's at the bottom of the ocean it's likely a pancake at this point. Anyway, seeing as how this mission was already well underway around the 4th of September, I doubt that it has much to do with the recent FAA investigations. Planning must have started back in August at least, if not sooner, and it would only be natural for SpaceX to want to get their hands on as much evidence as possible, regardless of the circumstances, if nothing else to prevent any competitor from getting to the wreckage first. I mean, it's unlikely that Jeff Bezos is going to be out there snooping around, but I wouldn't put it past China or Russia. Just like preparing for a mission, having the right tools makes all the difference. With Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit, you are equipped for any grooming challenge. This cordless trimmer features a 60-minute runtime, titanium-coated blades, and a built-in precision dial for 20 different length settings. Plus, it's waterproof, so you can trim in the shower without worry. And the kit doesn't stop there. It includes a beard shampoo, conditioner, oil, and balm to keep your beard looking and feeling its best. Right now, you can get 20% off and free international shipping with my promo code. Use the link in the description to grab yours today. Elevate your grooming game with Manscaped. 
Speaking of China though, take a look at this, the Nebula 1 rocket by Deep Blue Aerospace coming in for a landing after its most recent orbital hop test. It doesn't quite stick the landing, it's more like it gets spiked directly into the launch pad and then explodes, but it makes for a pretty cool video. This was shot with a special kind of drone called an FPV, which filmed at a very high frame rate, and then the video was slowed down in editing, so it looks like a video game, but it is real. This was the end of a 179 second hop test and Deep Blue says that the Nebula 1 successfully completed 10 of the 11 major verification tasks, assuming the last one was touch down softly and not explode. Looks like it either ran out of fuel or misjudged the final altitude reading. Deep Blue says that the rocket was carrying less than one fifth of its total propellant capacity. There was one other Chinese rocket landing this month, and that one appears to have been a bit more successful over at another commercial rocket maker called Land Space. On September 11th, 2024, the company conducted a 10 kilometer hop test at a spaceport in the Gobi Desert. The rocket used in this test was a vertical takeoff, vertical recovery verification vehicle. The flight lasted 200 seconds. After 113 seconds, the engines shut off and the vehicle reached an altitude of just over 10 2002 meters. The rocket then glided for 40 seconds before the landing burn began at 4,640 meters above the ground. The vehicle appears to have safely touched down at a reported 1.7 meters from the center of the landing pad, which was located 3.2 kilometers from the launch site. This test follows an earlier one in January 2024, where the same vehicle completed a 350 meter hop. The latest tests also included new technologies, such as a four-piece grid fin system to assist with the descent and landing process. The land space rocket is being developed as a reusable orbital vehicle. Stop me if this sounds familiar. It's a two-stage vehicle made from stainless steel and powered by methane and liquid oxygen or methylox. At liftoff, the rocket will weigh around 660 tons, stand 76.6 meters tall, and be 4.5 meters in diameter. Looking ahead, Land Space has ambitious goals. The company aims to conduct its first orbital flight in 2025, followed by the first recovery and reuse of the first stage in 2026. Land Space's test was significant for a few reasons. It was the first time a secondary engine ignition had occurred during a vertical landing test in China. The test also validated key technologies for reusable rockets, including engine gimbling, cold gas attitude control, and grid fins. These systems will be crucial for ensuring precise control of the rocket during a future high altitude and high speed flight. India's space program is moving into a new phase, with plans for reusable rockets, a lunar sample return mission, a space station, and a Venus exploration mission. Recent government approvals signaled the company's intent to expand its capabilities and strengthen its role in global space exploration. One of the key approvals is the Chandrayaan-4 lunar sample return mission, which will build on the success of the Chandrayaan-3 moon landing in 2023. Chandrayaan-4 is designed to test important technology Technologies that will support India's long-term goal of landing astronauts on the moon by 2040. This mission will use two LVM-3 rockets to send a lander to the moon, collect samples, and then return them to Earth. The total budget for the project is 21 billion rupees, which is about $253 million. The Chandrayaan-4 mission will be a very important milestone for India, helping the country develop capabilities like ascent from the lunar surface and orbital docking, which will be critical for future human missions. India is also looking ahead to planetary exploration, with the approval of the Venus Orbiter mission. Scheduled for launch in March 2028, this mission will focus on studying Venus's atmosphere, geology, and evolution. With a budget of about $149 million, VOM will contribute to our understanding of why Venus's environment differs so drastically from Earth's. The mission will involve collaboration between Indian industry, academic institutions, and government agencies. On the human spaceflight front, India is moving forward with its Gaganyaan program, which aims to establish the country's first space station by 2035. The project has been in development since it was first approved in 2018, and it's now expanded to an additional 111 billion rupees or 1.3 billion dollars. 
bringing the total Gagan Yen budget to 201 billion rupees or 2.43 billion dollars. The first module is set to launch by 2028 and there will be eight missions over the next few years to demonstrate key technologies for human spaceflight and long-term operations in low Earth orbit. One of the most crucial developments is India's focus on reusable rocket technology, with the approval of the next generation launch vehicle. This heavy lift rocket is expected to carry three times the payload of the current LVM-3 rocket, but at only 1.5 times the cost. The NGLV will feature reusable components and will be powered by green propulsion systems with a budget of 82.4 billion rupees or 994 million dollars. The NGLV is scheduled for at least three test flights over the next eight years. The program aims to make space access more affordable and efficient for India, positioning it to support both national missions and commercial satellite deployments. As India pushes forward with these ambitious missions, the country is on track to become the world's third largest space provider in the 2030s. If successful, these missions will not only elevate India's position in space, but also solidify its standing alongside the United States and China in the global space race.